still don't know if I've officially started. Uh, but this is going to be, so I do a lot of public speaking, a lot of public speaking, usually to insurance leaders. Okay. So I love the chance to speak to the future leaders of the industry. The, and usually I have beautiful slides designed by Jacobson's marketing people and, and like a well-tested, well-run, well-oiled machine of a presentation. Today you get the exact opposite. Okay. So this is presentation is going to be weird. Okay. I have like a hundred slides. We will not have time to get through all of them. I guarantee it. Okay. Um, uh, so basically what's going to happen is I, I'm, I'm going to record and what's your name? Darren. Darren. Thank you. So Darren is, is going to, is going to record the presentation and wherever, wherever we, and there's no questions during the presentation because I'm really going to like run through it. Okay. Uh, wherever we end up, that's fine. What I'm going to do when I get home tomorrow, I will record the second part of the video with the rest of the slides I had and then everything will get uploaded to YouTube. So you'll be able to catch whatever you missed. Okay. Questions are welcome after we walk out of this room. I'll be here for the rest of the day. I'll be here tomorrow. In fact, so, so questions are welcome after, but I want to get to as much material as possible. And the slides were not designed. Come on in, come on in. Uh, we, we saved the seat for you. You can't move. Okay, okay, okay. Come on in. Come on in. Uh, so, uh, you can move the seat. Uh, there we go. Uh, okay, so the slides have almost no pictures, almost no color. They're literally black text on white background, usually a word or a phrase just to remind you what's next, okay? Some of them have a book to dig deeper into that topic, okay? And, and some of the ones that have a book have a QR code, okay? So if you do wanna add that book to, to, to your Amazon wish list, take a picture of the QR code, you're good. But anyway, the slides are going on YouTube probably Monday. Come on, we saved you a seat, if you want to. Uh, <laughs> come on in, come on in, come on in. We've, we've, got cele we've got celebrities in the room. Nick Lamparelli, the, the, the voice of uh, Profiles in Risk. This man invented podcasting when it comes to, 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 to the carrier side of the insurance industry. I'm in Al Gore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 175 episodes. Uh, so Nick, Nick basically said, you guys need a podcast. I said, yeah, but I don't know how. He said, I don't know either, but I'll figure it out. And I said, I will totally sit with you. We'll do this together. 15 episodes later, I dropped out basically, and he's done another 100 Three episodes later. Yeah. And, and he's done another 170 episodes by himself. Uh, just uh, amazing, man. Uh, and Matthew Maxwell, recent CPCU. Those of you who are not, well, none of you are CPCUs. When you graduate, get your CPCU. We'll talk about that. So, so anyway, I'll kind of reintroduce real quick. Uh, and somebody's going to have to stop me when we're running out of time, by the way. So somebody kind of keep track of that. Okay, perfect. So, again, the slides. Uh, have a couple words on them. We will not get through all of them. When I get home tomorrow, I will record myself doing the last 20, 30, 40 slides or whatever. The whole thing will be on YouTube on the Insurance Nerds channel. So definitely subscribe to the Insurance Nerds channel on YouTube. Okay, let's hit the road. Okay, first of all, first piece of advice, realize how lucky you are. Only between 10 and 15% of, uh, of insurance people come with an RMI major. So you guys are going to come into the industry as absolute rock stars. You've already had, I guarantee a rock star experience. You get to go to the Gamma Conference. Many of you get to go to CPCU. Many of you get to go to RIMS. Some of you get to go to Lloyd's. For the rest of us, you know, pawns in this industry, <laughs> uh, peons who did, who did not get an RMI major, I still haven't been to RIMS 10 years in. I'm kind of insurance famous. I still have not been able to go to RIMS, okay? I haven't been to Lloyd's. Nick's been to Lloyd's. Uh, but for most of us, it takes like 15 years of being awesome on insurance to get to, to get to get to go to RIMS and like 30 to get to go to Lloyd's. So you are incredibly lucky. Remember that, especially because the people you'll be surrounded by were not that lucky. Okay. And not only is it the right thing to do to help pull them up, but also you'll have to as you grow in your, in your career. So we will talk about that. So always remember how lucky you are. If any of you don't think that you're really, really lucky for being here, Chat with me afterwards, I will convince you, I guarantee you, you are incredibly lucky. Uh, there is no such thing as an overnight success. So that's an iceberg. Uh, and I, I love, I love that, that picture because this is exactly what success looks like, right? Be people look at insurance nerds and they're like, oh my God, you guys came out of nowhere and all of a sudden you, you're this gigantic power in the industry. Yeah, for the last year and a half, right, we're this gigantic power in the industry. You guys missed the, the, the previous five years where we've been yelling into the, into the cyberspace with nobody listening. 
uh, little by little building it. And, and even before that, the two or three years that, that Carly and myself and Andrew Hull and then a bunch of other people spent at the, at the Nationwide Young Professional Group having the conversations that led to insurance nurse years later, right? So, so there is no such thing as an overnight success that's important to, to remember. Your job, regardless of what you get hired for, regardless of you go in to underwriting, to actuarial, to brokerage, I was gonna say claims, but RMI majors don't really go into claims until John Backman makes that happen. Uh, whatever job you, you go into, only two things matter. Okay, only two things matter. Delivering results and building relationships. Those are the two things that matter. I could stop the presentation here because those are the two things that matter. Everything we talk about will help with one of those two. Delivering results or and, and building relationships. It's, that is your job regardless of what your job title is. Okay, are we yes, clear? Claims is amazing too. <laughs> yes, sir, it, it is. Uh, and hopefully we'll, we'll get more gamma students in that direction in the future. Uh, doing the work well, which coming from gamma is gonna help because you know what you're doing much better than anybody else. Doing the work well is table stakes, but it's not enough. So basically, being a good employee, being a good underwriter, being a good broker, being a good actuary, getting the work done, that, that's what everybody does, right? You won't keep your job if you don't get the job done well. Okay, so, so doing, doing the job well is table stakes, but it is not enough. But you are not too good to get the coffee, okay? I'm 10, 10 years into my career. I, I have the, the amazing benefit of working from home for a wonderful company called J, the Jacobson Group out of Chicago, oldest and largest executive search and staffing firm in the country. I'm from Costa Rica. Costa Rica is a big coffee country. Every month for the last 18 months that I've been with the company, when I go into the office, I bring Costa Rican coffee and I make it. I make sure that it stays stocked. Nobody's asked me to do that, but it really has helped me. I, I won an award for, for being the remote person most in touch with, with, with the home office, okay? When you start your job, if somebody asks you to, to get the coffee or to get or to do photocopies <laughs> or anything stupid like that, don't say, oh, but I have my MBA, or oh, but I have my RMI major. Just do it, honestly. If they're asking you to do it, chances are everybody's done it. You, you look like a team player for doing it, and you look li like an arrogant ass for not doing it. I've been there, I, I, I've been the guy that's perceived as arrogant, don't do it, it's really bad for your career, okay? So again, even though you're really lucky and, you, and, and you're an RMI major or an actuarial, an actuarial major, uh, even though you're starting several years ahead of, of the call center where I started, many of us started, you are not too good to get the coffee, okay? Stay humble. If you're not 15 minutes early, you're late, okay? Super important, and it doesn't matter wh whether your company has a culture of everybody being on time, you're the one that's always gonna be on time. And that goes for conference calls, that goes for meetings. It is much better, you're much better off waiting for 10 minutes and checking Facebook or LinkedIn or insurance nets or, or, or whatever than being 10 seconds late. Okay, and that's not just for interviews, that goes for every day. Every day, it looks like I already got, gave some people my call, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Um, so always, always the early bird gets the worm. In conferences, I'm there an hour early. Because I, I get to meet the speakers, basically. Like, 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 if you're not 15 minutes early, you're late. Never miss a deadline, okay? Never, ever, ever, ever miss a deadline, okay? So Tony, what happens if I'm not going to make my deadline? That's fine, that's fine. You have to raise your hand, ask for help, let them know ahead of time, okay? Let your boss or whoever, whoever whatever you're working goes to, let them know that you're going to miss the deadline, let, let them know not 10 minutes ahead, let them know two days, three days ahead so they can help you, okay? But never miss a deadline unannounced. Any project manager, I've never been one of those, but any project manager will tell you, missing a deadline's okay as long as you let me know in time so it doesn't screw everything else up. Never miss a deadline without letting the right people know ahead of time. You can't multitask, okay? The media has lied to you. Job descriptions have lied to you. The research says you cannot multitask. It's that simple, nobody can. There's some research that says that women are slightly better than men at multitasking, but none of us can multitask, okay? When you're multitasking, you are, whatever it is you're doing, you're doing it not very well, okay? So you can multitask. If you wanna dig deeper into this idea, my favorite book, book is Deep Work. Uh, if you take a picture of the QR code, you, you'll add it to, to, your, to, your, uh, to your card on Amazon. Uh, fantastic, fantastic book, research-based, it changed my life because I love multitasking, okay? But nobody can do it, I can't do it, nobody can do it. You cannot multitask. Learning to unitask, learning to, to do deep work is important. Those of you that are actuaries, it's super, super important. 
uh, but it, for everybody. Knowing when to shut everything down and just focus. Nothing great gets produced by, by multitasking. My book wasn't written by multitasking. Okay, none of the three insurance books were written by multitasking. Okay, uh, so, so whatever you do, uh, learn to unitask. Don't lie to yourself. Even in the job description, when they're hiring you, said great multitasking, they were lying to, they were lying to themselves. The research says nobody, humans cannot multitask. Okay. Get organized. I am horribly, horribly, horribly disorganized. Horribly, and it's held me down in my career. It, over and over and over and over and over again. I'm Clearly I'm ADD. Uh, last year I got in trouble at work, and, and uh, I finally said, you know what? I got, got, di I went, got, got diagnosed, I, I got my ADD medication, which I don't take very often, only, only when I have like head, head down days. Uh, but get organized. It, being organized at work requires significantly more than being organized at school, okay? If, if you don't have a system, the easiest one to pick up is getting things done, okay? Pick up the book and it'll help you get, get organized and make sure that you don't miss things. Uh, by the way, you're going to get more work than you, than you can do. That is how the corporate world is set up. You're going to start eventually getting more work than you can do, okay? And, and some work will not get done, okay? You have to be organized so that you can figure out which work gets done and which work doesn't get done. So anyway, getting things done uh, by David Allen is a great way to, to easily do that. Long commutes suck, so make them productive. This man right here has, how long is your commute, my friend? It usually averages between an hour to an hour and a half. He has an awful commute, okay? Long commutes are bad for your health. Long, long commutes over half an hour affect your happiness level. We were having this conversation yesterday. However, uh, train is better than car. Number two, car distance is better than car traffic. Okay, so, so his 60 miles or 70 miles. How many in here know where Decatur is? How many here know where Plano is? First and last, work, or sorry, home, work. So that's hard for him, but if you end up in that situation, an early career, if you work in a big city, chances are you'll be in that situation. Do your best to avoid it. Over time, work to get away from it, okay? And I'm doing my best to, to get you more remote opportunities in the industry. But if you do have a long, co a long commute, that is time to be productive. That is time to listen to audiobooks, to podcasts, to, to grow yourself. Don't waste that time. And that is what Matt does really, really well. So in his case, it works. I don't want him to do it for life, but it works because he keeps gr growing himself. So long commutes suck, so make them productive, okay? Domain expertise never goes out of style. Even in the insure tech side of the world, being an, an expert, and you're already, you're starting like five years ahead of most other brand new insurance employees because of your risk management major and the exposure you've had, that's, that's gives you a, a, big, a, a big head start today, okay? It's not a permanent head start, okay? So depending on which area of the business you go into, continue educating yourself. If you're, if you're on the property cash of the carrier site, CPCU. We have one, two, three, four, five. We have at least five CPCUs in the room. Believe me, it pays. It was a career making for me and a few thousand of my closest friends. It's an amazing community too. Uh, truly, like I'm not exaggerating on that. Uh, if you go into the brokerage space, CAC. If you go into a life space, CLU. If you go into a professional liability space, RPLU. And there's many, 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 many more. Those are just kind of the big dogs in the industry. I would start working on one of those the first day your company is willing to pay for it, which might be at the end of your first year or at the end of your first day. <coughs> but I would start working on them right away, basically. Domain expertise never goes out of style. Experience only comes with time, but technical education can happen quickly. I did my CPCU in five months. I don't recommend doing it that way. Carly did hers in 12 months. I, I had three waivers. Uh, Carly did hers in 12 months. I know people that have done them in three or four months. I don't recommend doing it that way, but you can. Okay, the beauty is that, let's say a two year pace, if you start on day one, and they won't give it to you until you have two years of, of work experience in the industry, a two year pace, you finish, you're, you're, you finish year two, you now have two years of experience, you have an RMA major, you have a CPCU, you are unstoppable, and you're incredibly valuable, okay? So, so definitely, uh, so yeah, experience only comes over time. Don't assume that your CPCU, CLU, I have 10 designations. Don't assume, uh, and I made this assumption, that with my 10 designations, I'm an expert and I can do anything I want. 
Well, I had no underwriting experience. It was very, very hard to get that first under, underwriting uh, opportunity. <coughs> Uh, don't assume that just the education is enough experience. Yes, sir. I'm going to say since we're here in this environment, I don't want us to miss a huge opportunity because everything you're saying is, is on point and absolutely important. There's a lot of people, especially your age, you have that, that mental agility to be able to I can knock this out in six months or whatever. That's awesome. That's great. But there's going to be someone, if not more than one person, sitting in this room right now that's going to start that journey that's gonna get in their career, life's gonna get busy, work's gonna get busy, you're gonna start families, you're gonna start this journey, and it's gonna feel tough, it's gonna to get tough. Sometimes, catastrophic things in your own personal life might happen. You might be thinking that life's going great, you're married, you're, you've got kids, things are going well, something can happen to flip all of that upside down, like a divorce, or what have you. But even if that happens, in those challenging moments, Remember your why. Remember the passion you have for this career and where this can take you. If you're halfway through the journey or you've got a couple of exams in or, or whatever the case is, if you're down to your last one, you feel like you can't do it because it's just too much. So th take a breather. Keep. Mm -hmm. and get no back matter how long it takes. No matter how long it takes. Yes. Seven years from me. No there are people that have taken 30 years. It. It's still worth it. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, Influence. At the beginning, you're probably not going to be a manager, right? I have to this day, I have to this day not been a manager. Ten years in, in fact, at this point, I have figured out I don't want to be a manager, okay? Uh, many of you will grow to be managers, but you won't start as a manager, chances are. So learning how to influence is absolutely important. I, and, and Insurance Nerds, I'm just a face of it, but Insurance Nerds has brought incredible changes to this industry. We have student loan reimbursement in this industry because we brought the idea in four years ago and fought for it. Okay, and I'm seeing changes happening in the industry because of the stuff that, that, that we do. And again, I've never been a manager. I just brought the, the ideas in and kind of spearheaded them. Learning how to influence without authority is absolutely crucial for your, for your career. Uh, this is the best book on it. Robert Cialdini is an actual researcher. I always try to recommend uh, empirically based, uh, research based books. Uh, he has three. This is his like business book. Uh, there's another one if you're a real nerd. Uh, there's another one that is like his research. But anyway, research-based ways to influence people. Very quick example, the, the, the Benjamin Franklin rule. If people do you a favor, they like you better than if you do them a favor, right? Well, this guy's done a ton of research on many, 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 many ways to influence without authority. Definitely worth a, a read early in your career. Five years of experience is very different from doing the same year five times, okay? You're probably gonna start in a nice place compared to where I started in the call center, okay? If you're still learning, good, stick, stick around, keep, keep learning. The moment you're no longer learning, right, if, if the job, you get to the point where you're doing it with your eyes closed, that is exactly the time to go ahead and apply for, for, for the next job. Don't stay at a job where you're no longer learning, right? Five years as, as a commercial underwriter, doing the same accounts year after year is not five years of experience, okay? So, and this goes for the rest of your, of your career. Network in all directions, both internally <coughs> and, and externally, okay? Don't be one of those people, and I, I know a few, that only network up, and they're really, really good at networking with the leadership, and they ignore their peers, and they don't help people rise, okay? Network in all directions, so there's two different books for, for this. <clears throat> How to Win Friends and Influence People is the classic, it's from the 1920s or 30s. Uh, Taryn, who is here and is speaking later today, calls it How to Be a Sociopath for Dummies. She hates it. It's really old fashioned, personally, Never Eat Alone is a much more modern version. It's from the early 2000s. Never Eat Alone is fantastic. Uh, either of those will teach you how to network well, okay? So the, be nice to, to, to the people as you pass them by, uh, to the people that you see as, as, as you grow to the top because you'll see, you, you'll see them again when you're, when you're coming to the bottom. Uh, so anyway, networking is important. Uh, get to know people both above peers and below you. And the ones below you help them help them grow. Give to your network without keeping count. People ask me how I built the insurance nurse to a, to a seventeen thousand connections on LinkedIn. We reach about forty five thousand insurance people. Basically, if we're connected on LinkedIn, I will make an introduction for you. If we're connected on LinkedIn, I will take time out of my schedule to have a conversation with you about your career. Okay, it's that simple. The fact that you're in insurance is all I need. You're part of my network. Okay, and what what that does. It is 
people are always thrilled to help me out when I'm asking them for help, okay? So give to your network without keeping count. That way you multiply what, 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 you, what you get back. Show, don't tell how good you are. I was really bad at, I was, I had my CPC on my MBA and I felt like a rock star, right? And, and I went into this leadership development program at Nationwide uh, in the finance area and I don't have a finance background. Uh, and I failed horribly, horribly failed in that program. I failed forward, but I failed. And, and uh, I got real feedback for the very first time ever. Many carriers are shy about giving you real feedback. And the hardest feedback was, you keep telling us that you're a CPCU. You keep telling us about your MBA. Don't tell me, show me how good you are, okay? Don't tell people you're an RMI major. Show them you're an RMI major. Does that make sense? Show, show don't tell how good you are. Feedback is a gift, okay? And some of us, and you guys are Gen Zers, so not so much, but some of the millennials, we never got real feedback, right? We, we got an, an, eight, eighth ribbon, an eighth place ribbon on, on, on an eight lane pool, right? We're addicted to feedback, but some of us never got real feedback. Hopefully, if you're lucky, if, if I've spoken at your company, you'll get real feedback. Feedback is a gift, okay? Feedback is a gift. This book teaches you how to take that gift. It also teaches you how to give that gift. So when you do find yourself in a, in a management or supervisory role, Great, great, great book. Feedback is a gift. Ask for it, beg for it, let them know how important it is, it is for you. Feedback is a gift. Don't stress too much about choosing your first employer. I have many, many phone conversations with soon to graduate risk management majors. By that I mean like a year out because you guys get job offers super early. <coughs> uh, and, and they generally go like this, Tony, I have competing offers from a broker and a carrier, and I don't know which side I wanna go. Or I have competing offers from this carrier and this other carrier, and I don't know which, which side I, I wanna go, and I'm really stressed about it. I remember those times, I didn't have multiple offers, but I remember being stressed out about, about where I was gonna end up. Don't stress too much about it, because number one, if you go there and you hate it, you get two years of experience, you let them pay for your CPCU, and you go elsewhere for a 40% raise. That's the market we live in today, okay? On, on the other hand, if you go there and you love it, you get your two years of experience, you let them pay for your CPCU, and then chances are they won't be able to pay you what you're worth in the market. So you might have to leave and come back, okay? So don't stress too much about your first job. Find somewhere where you like the people, find somewhere where you learn. That is the biggest thing. Find somewhere where, you will, where they will invest in you. As long as you get that right, you can't go wrong. Don't worry too much about, about, about your, your first job. Chances are you will not be there forever, okay? Uh, becoming a manager is not the same as becoming a leader. It, re it really isn't. Okay. I have never been a manager. I've had the title sales manager, which, which means that, that I uh, manage uh, relationships with brokers for an insurance company, uh, but I've never been a people manager. Okay, But most people in the industry would say that I'm a leader in the industry. Okay, um, So there are different things, and sometimes you'll have managers who are not leaders, who are just managers. That happens, and you can't manage your manager, so it's just the way it is, Okay, that's fine. So those are different things. I do want you to, when you grow to be a manager, I want you to be a good manager, but I want you to be a good leader today, okay, right away. Uh, there's a couple of resources you should have there to become the best leader you can, lead at any level. Any, anyone here's lead at any level is probably the best resource for, for, for leadership stuff. And, and uh, when you become a manager, manager-tools.com, 13 years of podcasts, not insurance specific, amazing content. They also have career-tools.com. Anyway, you, if, if, if you're out of podcasts to listen to in the community, this is one that you should listen to. Even the old episodes, they're topical. So basically, how to hire, how to do a resume, and they're half an hour long. Uh, they're, they're, they're timeless, not timely. But anyway, uh, they'll help you become a great manager. And Amy, at the any level, can help you become a great leader. Uh, dress for the job you want, says the guy dressed in the Superman shirt and the cape. Uh, but stay authentic to who you are. So this guy dressed in the Superman uh, shirt, uh, for the first several years of my career, suit and tie every day, even though, the, even though that was overly formal for Nationwide Insurance. First time I, I went to CPCU annual meeting, first three times, suit and tie from the moment I got on the plane to the moment I got back home. Uh, I walked all over Vegas, I destroyed my feet with the formal shoes. Uh, dress for the job you want. Yes, that, that is good advice. You guys were all dressed up yesterday. Definitely do that for the first few years while you build yourself a brand, okay? Remain authentic to who you are. And as you build yourself a brand, and as, as people get to know how good you are, as you've shown them, don't tell them, as you've shown them how good you are, you can start relaxing uh, and help us relax this industry for the next generation.
okay? Which is where I'm at now, right? Relaxing things for the next generation. But definitely at the beginning, you do have to dress up uh, and play the part. So dress the part, build credibility, and then little by little, help us change the world. Okay, little by little. I, I imagine this moment where I'll, I'll activate all, all the young insurance nerds out there and we will change the industry. I have 15 minutes left. I think I'm making really good time. Uh, if you are not failing every once in a while, you're not pushing yourself hard enough. Since I have time, I will go into a little bit of a story here. Um, I started in, in the claims call center at Farm Bureau. Great place to start your insurance career. Making almost no money. Uh, Des Moines, Iowa, super, super cheap area. But a great brand call center. They helped me love it, they fell in love with insurance. They helped me understand how to grow within insurance. They did such a good job that I got recruited by Nationwide out of the call center and put it into a, into a claims role at a Nationwide not call center. Uh, I got my CPCU there because of, of, of uh, Farm Bureau's great advice. And I used that CPCU to get an underwriting job. Uh, as soon as I accepted the job, I asked. Because they, they gave me like a $1,000 raise. I had just finished my CPCU and my MBA, got this cool new job. And they gave me a $1,000 raise, putting me in the lowest part of the pay band for an underwriter at Nationwide Insurance. So I asked, if I am the best underwriter you ever have, if I perform, when could I get a, a promotion to senior underwriter? Meaning, because I know you're never gonna give me a raise in seats, like a real <coughs> raise. So meaning, when can I get paid for, for what all I've done? And the answer was, regardless of performance, I have a very tenured team, so I can't afford to promote you for at least five years. Not a great answer, right? So, and I love Nationwide, anyway, we're a great company, it's just the reality. I, I'm glad that she was honest with me. So I did that for a year, I learned a lot about ag underwriting, uh, and then I managed to talk my way into the, the Nationwide Financial Leadership Rotation Program. An amazing leadership development program, mostly for brand new people. I was only a third or four people coming from uh, an internal role. Uh, I'm not a finance guy. They invested a lot in me, I learned a lot, uh, it was an amazing experience and I failed. I failed horribly. I got a one in my performance review, okay? Uh, the only reason I didn't get fired is because I had a record with the company and they knew that, that I was a solid underwriter and they helped me land on my feet. So I, I, I failed forward. And I ended up in a role as a sales manager that would have taken me five or six years to get to. Also, I got a 43% raise to, to, when I went into the, into the FLRP and then I got another $5,000 raise when I failed out of it. Uh, it, it was an inflection point for my career, okay? Uh, and I am way ahead of where I would be if I hadn't tried that. Don't be afraid to fail. Failing's okay. If you never fail, you're probably not trying hard enough. You could be doing much bigger things and just don't know it yet. Don't be afraid to fail. Work-life balance matters. It really, really does. And luckily, this is an industry, especially on the carrier side, that we have really decent work hours. If you ever went to the executive levels, those might be tough. Claims can be tough in, in hours. Uh, brokerage, the first several years are, are tough in, in hours. Work-life balance matters. Remember what I told you earlier. We will give you more work than you can do, especially as you grow a little bit. We will give you more work than you can do. Stay organized, prioritize it correctly, do the right work, and at a decent hour, go home, okay? Also, it's easier to do CPCU before you have kids, so start it right away. Uh, but work that balance matters. Nobody gets to the end of, of their life and says, I wish I had worked more, okay? I adore my job, I put in a lot of hours. Both myself and my girlfriend work from home and we put in a lot of hours, but we love what we're doing. Uh, work life balance is important and what that means, you'll have to discover along the way it's different for every person, right? I, the last three weeks I've probably put in 100 hours a week uh, because I've had to fly all over the country, uh, but I had so much fun doing it. But next week I'm gonna, I'm gonna chill. And I'll probably put in like my 37 and relax and like reconnect with my girlfriend who I've seen twice in the last month. Uh, anyway, uh, never whine, never ever whine. The, the drinking kind is fine, but no whining. Okay? <laughs> Nothing is perfect. Always come with a suggested solution. So you are allowed and encouraged to point out the things we're doing wrong. Okay, and we're doing many things wrong. Many, th many of them because we've been doing it that way for decades. Our systems suck all over the industry, right? These systems, okay? Don't whine, come with solutions, okay? I guarantee your boss will never resent you if when you bring up a problem, you also bring a proposed solution. It doesn't have to be perfect, but always come with a proposed sol solution. Uh, never whine without a solution, basically. Never whine, bring up problems, but always with a solution. Don't gossip, and I struggle a little bit with this one. Don't gossip, you'll get nothing out of it, believe me. 
and getting a reputation as the office gossip is, is career destroying. Don't gossip, 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 don't gossip mm -hmm. okay? Um, it's a career lattice, not a career ladder, and I should have a picture of a lattice, you guys know what those look like, right? It's not straight up. Uh, my career is a perfect example. If you had asked me five years ago what I wanted to do, I literally would have, I would have, I had literally used to answer that question. I want to be CEO of Nationwide. And I figure that if I don't get there, I'll end up being CEO of a smaller carrier, and that's okay, okay? Five or six years later, I realized I don't even want to be a manager, okay? <laughs> and no, like, I don't even want to be a manager. I want to do what I love, okay? And there comes a point, pay-wise, that the research says, so the reason I wanted to be CEO is because I was making like 30,000 a year, right? And, and I thought that, that growing in management was the only way to, to grow my salary. No, not at all, and there are companies where you can be a specialist do very well in sales, you can do very well without becoming a manager. Become a manager if that's really what you want to do, but not just for the pay, there are other ways. And, and also it makes you a better rounded person if you move around a little bit and, and get broad experience. Okay, insurance is very silent at times. Move around a little, it's a much better way to, to, to grow your career. But yeah, it's not a career ladder, it's not straight up. Chances are you'll have false starts, you'll fall down, pick yourself up, you'll switch disciplines, You'll do this, you'll do that, eventually you'll find something you love, okay? But it's not, it's, not, it's not a ladder. Avoid major CLMs. I don't mean CLM, the conference, which is the claims, claims uh, legal conference, which is now part of the CPCU. Does anybody know what a CLM is? No, 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 none of, the, none of the, uh, the students. Anybody know what a CLM is? A CLM is a career limiting move, okay? Avoid major career limiting moves. The classics are getting too drunk at the company Christmas party, okay? <laughs> Or hooking, up, or, or hooking up with somebody's spouse, okay? <laughs> Both of those are, are CLMs, especially if it's like a partner or your boss or a, a VP, okay? Avoid major career limiting moves, okay? Don't be the drunk person at the Christmas party, okay? Avoid major career limiting moves. Happiness, I love this book. Uh, Shona Acre, uh, middle class kid from Texas. I believe in Texas, but yeah, middle class kid from Texas applies to, Texas, to, to Harvard on a dare and gets in. And he's like, I've gotta go. So he, he goes to Harvard, stays for like 16 years, he gets, gets his undergrad, gets his master's, gets his PhD, teaches for a while, writes a couple books. His research is on happiness psychology. What he found is that by interviewing, and at the beginning of his research was interviewing uh, Harvard undergrads. They have the world by the short hairs, right? And he found that many Harvard undergrads were unhappy, even though all they had to do was get through school and they would graduate into really well-paying jobs, families full of connections. I mean, we're talking like kids of politicians here. Uh, and he found that many of them were unhappy and he couldn't figure out how that happened. But anyway, 16 years later, his research has found that society tells you that success leads to happiness. And it doesn't actually work that way. It's the other way around. Happiness leads to success. The happy kids end up being successful, okay? The first half of the book, is about that. It's about how happy people end up, end up being more successful. I'm really, really lucky because I, my natural happy, happiness level is really high. Yours might not be. At about the half point of the book, he says, I would be a complete ass if I, if I spent half a book telling you how happiness will make you successful and then not tell you how to get happy. The second half of the book is research-based ways to be happier. It changed my life. It truly did. And it'll change your life in different ways than it changed mine. Yeah. I read it just before going to the CPCU annual meeting in, in, in 2011, and because of that book, I went to see five shows in five nights. Uh, basically, I, I changed my spending. Instead of spending money on stuff, I spend money on experiences. I've now been to, to 50 some countries with, with my girlfriend, she's been to 60 some of them. Uh, experiences are much more long lasting happiness, okay? And there's many, many, many other things, research based. So anyway, the happier you get yourself, the better off you'll do in your career, and there are scientifically backed ways to, to become happier. Fantastic book. Uh, understand, understand whether you're an extrovert or an introvert. No surprise, I am an extreme extrovert. Carly is an introvert, and, and my girlfriend's an introvert. Many great, great professionals are, are introverts, okay? You just need to figure out which one you are. There's good ways to do, that, to do that. The quickest one is, when you come to a conference like this, if you get to your room afterwards and you can't sleep, you're so charged up, you're probably an extrovert. If you, if, if, you, if you have to go to your room and like breathe and like relax for a little bit in between sessions, you're an introvert, okay? Or you might be in the middle. But learning which one you are and then 
using the best techniques to, to be as effective as you can is very, very helpful. Okay. So if you are an introvert, you read this book tonight. Okay. <laughs> Quiet. By, by Susan Cain, The Power of Introverts in a World That Won't Stop Talking. This book was a career maker for several introverts in my life, including Carly. That's, that's why I suggested it. Uh, it teaches you a lot of tools on how to survive and how to thrive in, in a world that doesn't let you get a word in edgewise and where you end up exhausted after chatting with Tony. Okay? So fantastic book for, 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 for introverts. For, uh, for extroverts, and actually for both of you, brag. Okay? If you're an extrovert, brag will help you not offend people when you brag, right, and do it in a, in a way that's very measured. And if you're an introvert, it'll teach you how to promote yourself, which is an important skill, okay? It's not just getting the work done, you do have to make sure the right people know how good you are getting the work done, and a good way to do that without, without uh, blowing it is, is this fantastic book. Uh, learn to negotiate, even if that's not your job. Eventually, someday it will be. Learn to negotiate, we have a great article in Insurance Nerds uh, which is illustrated by myself and Lisa Simpson trying to negotiate a speaking gig, but this book is not that long and it's absolutely fantastic. Getting to yes, there's a follow-up uh, called Getting Past No, but at the very least, uh, read Getting to Yes, learn how to negotiate. Learn how to negotiate your salary. That's a special negotiation case, okay? <laughs> and I can help you with that, but read the book over time. By the way, women and minorities. Okay, I'm Latino. Uh, my girlfriend uses a wheelchair. So we have a like, fully minority family, basically. Uh, help us help you. Help us eliminate the pay, the pay gap. One of the biggest problems is women are less likely to negotiate. Minorities are less likely to negotiate. Please negotiate and learn how to do it well. We can advise you on it, but here's all the theory. Negotiate your salary. Play to your strengths. Gallup found that uh, through, through a ton of research that Tony is never gonna be good in analytical roles. That's why I failed at FLRP, okay? But analytical roles early on in your career pay really well, so they were very tempting, okay? And that's how I ended up at FLRP, okay? For me, I need a role that, that, that is the opposite of analytic, a, a, a role where I get people excited, right? Uh, a, a role where, where crazy ideas are, are good things, okay? Play to your strengths, okay? So read the book, take the test, learn what your strengths are, and then look for jobs that play to those strengths. You will never, regardless of how much, you can spend 100 hours a month on improving your weaknesses, or you can spend an hour a month on improving your strengths, and you'll do better improving your strengths. So again, research-based, play to your strengths. Eventually, there will come a point where you can't get all your work done, okay? So I don't want you to read this book today, I want you to read this book in a couple of years. This, this book is, is kind of crazy, but it's scientifically based, and basically teaches you in any job, once you've figured out the job, don't start this tomorrow, once you've figured out the, out the job, about 20% of the things you do bring 80% of the results. Because you have to understand the job first to understand that connection, and there are things in, in the job that are useless. This is how to figure out which is which, and then focus as much as you can on, on the 20, and you will, Stands laps around everybody else. One minute, one minute. Uh, ultimately, a single thing matters, the research says, and that's grit. Grit basically means sticking to it no matter what. It doesn't matter how many times you fall. Again, research-based book, doesn't matter how many times you fall, how many times you fail. All that matters is that you get back on the horse, what Matthew was saying earlier, and that you keep going. Uh, the most impressive thing is helping other people. And this is kind of a long story. I'll, I'll finish it on the, on the YouTube since, since I'm kind of out of time. But uh, a great leader at Nationwide, uh, I got celebrated for finishing my CPCU super quickly. And uh, uh, whatever his name was, the VP of Claims, Dick Kleiner. Dick Kleiner came up to uh, my cubicle to thank me for, to, to congratulate me. And when he, when he came up, uh, a, a teammate, Aaron Pierce, got up and said, Tony helped me and several of us to get our AICs significantly smaller than the CPCU. Then I emailed Dick to thank him, thank him for coming over. And, and, uh, and Dick said, the most impressive thing I, I saw today was not how fast you did CPCU. The most impressive thing, thing I saw today is how you've hel you're helping those around you grow. And it truly is, and it'll pay back over and over and over. And by the way, the reason that, that I need you to remember how lucky you are and I need you to network down and help people up is because eventually you will get to a role where it's not about what you can do it's about what you can get other people to do. And that's where relationships re really come in. Uh, I actually, I think I heard my last slide. Good job, Tony. Uh, 
I'm happy, add me on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm super easy to find. I'm happy to open any doors that I can. I'm always available for career advice. And if I ever do help or this presentation helped, I only ask two things. This comes from Jose Cruz who once opened a door for me, got me a job. Um, and, and he said, I only ask for two things, okay? Number one, don't let me down. Uh, number one, don't let me down. Number two, pay it forward, okay? I, I don't need the, the Starbucks gift card for having made an introduction for you. Give the good advice to the next kid that comes along. Get him involved with Gamma. If they're young enough, get him into RMI, get him into CPCU, pay it forward. And yes, that is my last slide. Thank you very much. Hopefully not a Hey, this is Tony and I just finished giving my, uh, the first five years presentation at Gamma Era Sigma. Uh, this is a brand new presentation, first time I give it. Uh, it looks like it was very well received. I managed to get through all 50 slides in, 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 in uh, 45 minutes, which I had, I had warned the audience I probably wouldn't be able to. Uh, so really, really awesome. Uh, I, I very much look forward to posting it on, on YouTube and, and hope that everybody else benefits from it.